Today we're speaking with Dr. Philip Sharp, Institute Professor at the David H. Koch Institute for Integrative Cancer Research at MIT. He has won the fourth annual AACR Margaret Foti Award for Leadership and Extraordinary Achievements in Cancer Research. Thank you so much for joining us. Oh, thank you. Congratulations on receiving the Margaret Foti Award. What does this achievement mean to you? Well, it's always a great honor to have colleagues in the field select you for an award particularly award for uh, leadership and excellence in cancer research. So I'm, I'm very honored by it. Uh, the real value of award is not that it makes you feel good as an investigator, though it does, uh, but uh, it really is to try to encourage others to move along the same path, to uh, recognize that there are uh, important things or, or essential things to be done uh, in leadership in uh, the cancer community and hopefully they will take up the charge when their time comes. It's a particular honor to, to receive the FODI Award. Marge has been such a dynamic and strong leader of the AACR that she really has made important contributions to cancer research not only in this country but around the world. The AACR is a, a, a very effective organization at bringing people together, at nucleating uh, interesting meetings and publications and communications and promoting cancer research. And Marge is, over a decade now, uh, has been the very dynamic leader of that organization. And to be associated with her name uh, is really a, an honor for me. In 1977, UN colleagues discovered RNA splicing. This finding provided one of the first indications of discontinuous genes in mammalian cells. It changed the field of molecular biology and shed new light on the genetic causes of cancer. What was it like to make this discovery and receive the Nobel Prize? Well, the discovery itself back in 77 was really quite exciting. Um, before then, uh, the scientific community had felt that uh, the genes as they were structured in human cells were really quite simple. And much like the genes that had been previously studied in bacterial organisms where it was easier to isolate them. And we were lucky and we were looking for it and we, we got there and made the observation that the genes in human cells were, were fundamentally different. They were split with sense and nonsense sequences intermingled in the, the gene. And in fact, now that we have the sequence of the human genome, we know that only about 2% of the human genome codes for sense in the concept, in the context of functional proteins, 2% control, uh, encodes control, and the other 95% is noise as far as we know now. So it's, it's a striking, striking uh, you know, vision of what the genome is like. And we were lucky to be able to, to make some of the uh, initial observations that, that set us along the path of understanding the genome structure and function. And by understanding how genes function, we were then able to think of cancer in the context of gene activity and what mutations and changes in genes could cause cancer, and it became a very, uh, uh, you know, it was a groundbreaking point in cell biology that then led to important insights into cancer and how cancer genes function. We now know that every cancer cell has hundreds of mutations in them, some of which are important, some of which are not so important, but we now understand cancer as a genetic disease in part because of that. Now, receiving a Nobel Prize is really a, a very, very uh, uh, distinct honor. Um, the Swedes do this in great privacy and secrecy. You, you have no idea if you're going to get a phone call. Uh, when you do get the phone call, it's widely acknowledged. Uh, the morning I got the call, a reporter was at my house in 15 minutes. And uh, so you, you become uh, a little bit more noteworthy because of that. And when you travel to Sweden and they celebrate the prize for a week, it, it's really one of the, the, the grand experiences uh, of one's life. The Swedes really know how to do formal celebrations and they do it well. And, uh, and so it was, it was special. And it has brought 
since then recognition and, and gave me many opportunities to try to use my contributions to science to promote uh, cancer research and, and uh, improve the, the lives of others. Your lab currently examines how RNA molecules act as switches to turn genes on and off, which could potentially lead to a new class of therapeutics. Could you describe your current work in relation to this potential new class? Well, <clears throat> in 1998, um, Farr and Mello, uh, two younger investigators, uh, made the discovery that little, uh, that RNA, uh, double-strand RNA, a structure of RNA that's not found commonly in cells, uh, is a signal to silence a gene. And we did some biochemistry that uh, led to the understanding that small pieces of this double-strand RNA was very effective in silencing genes. And that then gave us a tool to investigate individually what every gene in the human cell is doing. Because we can make these little RNAs and we can introduce them into cells, and they'll silence that gene, not the other genes, and then we can ask, what does that gene do? And that's a powerful tool, and it has really changed uh, how we do cell biology over the decade. And we're now able to <clears throat> think about using the same technology, but to now take those little snippets of RNA, design them to genes that cause cancer, introduce them into patients, silence a gene, and hopefully affect the development of cancer. Now, this re depends on uh, a lot of technology. It depends on understanding the gene to silence. It depends on making the little RNA. And it depends on taking that RNA and encapsidating it into particles that are very small relative to cells, nanoparticles, and then getting them taken up by the cells in the body. So we're working on that as a community and, and in biotech companies. And <clears throat> I believe we're actually going to be able to use this technology to, to treat cancer and many other diseases. And uh, that it'll be a whole new way, a whole new f type of drug that will benefit people. Now, it'll take us some time to do that. We've been working on it now for about eight years. Uh, I, you know, we could possibly be, we're treating patients now, but we could possibly be uh, proving the effect of the, the, the treatment in several years to, to five. So I'm, I'm optimistic that we will see a new type of drug of small RNAs being used to treat cancer, but it's going to take us some years to do so. And, and that would be a, a fabulous, fabulous development. In the meantime, we're able to use these RNAs to explore a cancer in animals and in, in other uh, type of experiments, and it has been a, a great contribution to the field. You are the chair of the Scientific Advisory Committee for Stand Up to Cancer. Could you elaborate on the promise that the current grant recipients hold for the future of cancer research? Well, Stand Up to Cancer <coughs> has really um, been a very interesting process. Um, in putting it together, the concept was to pull together dream teams. People who were involved in treating patients, people who were involved in in pathology and understanding the, the differences between different types of cancer, people who were involved in basic science, who were sequencing genes and under, developing drugs. And to put those people together as a team around specific cancers and then see the, the contributions of all of them accelerate the rate at which you could advance treatments in cancer. And uh, we've picked five teams. They're really very exciting. In each case, uh, the teams that were selected were innovative in approach, something new, not what's been done before, um, led by major leaders who've had in the past major contributions, and uh, putting together the best group of people around them to interact with them uh, to bring the most you know, advanced science, the most advanced pathology, the most advanced clinical practice. And so the teams are really now just beginning to, to work together. There's already been some uh, advances where things wouldn't have been done if there hadn't have been a the team there. 
And uh, I'm optimistic that we're going to have some very significant scientific advances out of these teams. Now, I was just at a symposium this, today at the, the AACR annual meeting, and it was a symposium on translational clinical science, and the promise of what's going on in, in cancer treatment now and research advancing cancer treatment is just stunning. It's just stunning. And there's so many wonderful things to be done and it will translate into patients benefiting and living longer and living better with cancer. So I, I'm really excited about where the field is now and Stand Up to Cancer has put a spotlight on a part of that field, but the whole field is just in a, in a wonderful position now. Dr. Sharp, thank you so much. Thank you.